now will you notice something has happened. Verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who once were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Now the court of the Gentiles there in the tabernacle, they could come, but they were way off. Let me tell you, they were way out actually in right field. And it was a long way to home base from where they were. And therefore, the very wonderful thing is the blood of Christ has brought us in and will bring us to heaven someday. Now, will you notice here? For he is our peace who made both one and broke down the metal wall of the fence, the enmity, having abolished in his flesh the law of commandments contained in ordinances in order that he might create the two in himself into one new man, making peace, and that he might reconcile both under God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity in it, and having come, he preached peace to you who are far off and to them that are nigh. So that today, friends, when you come to Jesus Christ, you are brought not only into a body, But now you are brought into a place where you stand before God on a par with anybody. I can stand today with you and you stand today with me on equal footing. And therefore, the point of separation for believers should never be color. It should never be a social status. It should never be on any basis at all because we've been made one in Christ. And I don't care who you are. If you're a believer in Christ, you and I are going to be together throughout eternity. And I don't know why we shouldn't speak to each other every now and then down here, friends. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's our peace. That is, the peace for both Jew and Gentile, for the contrast here is between them. And he broke down the middle wall of the fence, that is, the partition, the enmity that was between the two, And he's made now a new man, put us together in Christ, and made peace. That is, we have peace with God, we should have with each other, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body. God's work of reconciliation is already completed. He's ready to receive you if you are ready to come. And therefore, the message that goes out is, be ye reconciled to God, and if you will be, then that brings you into a new body, a body of believers, and doesn't make any difference who they are, Jew or Gentile. doesn't make any difference about the color of their skin. They may be white, they may be brown, they may be red, they may be black, but that doesn't make any difference. If they're in Christ, we're made one new man, and we should have peace. Now, you see, the emphasis in this passage is upon the glorious person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He not only made peace by the cross, but those who trust him are placed in him, and they become a new man now. And the contrast, of course, here, as we've indicated, is between Jew and Gentile. But God had made a difference originally by separating the Jew from the nations. Now, that difference led to spiritual pride, actually, on the part of the Jew. And ultimate, there was hatred between Jew and Gentile. When a Jew and a Gentile are placed in Christ, there's peace. Not only because of the new position, but because something new has come into existence. And Paul identifies this as a new man in Christ. We're something new. So that Paul had said to the Corinthians, "...give none offense, neither to the Jew, the Gentile, nor to the church of God." That church is the new man. Before God, the Gentile is not brought up to the status of the Jew. He's actually brought up higher. And Chrysostom made this statement, and my, this is a wonderful statement. Will you listen to it? He does not mean that he has elevated us to that high dignity of theirs, but he has raised both us and them to one still higher. I will give you an illustration. Let us imagine that there are two statues, one of silver, the other of lead, and then that both shall be melted down and the two shall come out gold. So thus he has made the two one. I think that's a marvelous illustration. 
that we've been brought together in Christ. May I say to you, I do not believe in the universal fatherhood of God and the universal brotherhood of man. To me, that's a damnable heresy. Forgive me for saying it, but that's what it is. I believe the brotherhood is those that are in Christ. Now, a man may have a skin as white as the driven snow. And if he's not a child of God, he's not my brother. I don't care what you say. He's not my brother. But that man may have a skin that's as black as midnight. And if he's a child of God, he's my brother. Now, you can't escape that. We're something new. (laughs) We're in Christ, a new man. And this is the building, the temple that God is building today. And it might, therefore, be more accurate to say that the Jews have been brought down to the level of the Gentile, as both are in the same state of sin. Because all of us are brothers, actually, as sinners, as sons of Adam. Because Paul says, what then? Are we better than they? That is, are we Jews better than the Gentiles? No, in no wise. For we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they're all under sin. That's the state we're in. Now, the peace referred to is between Jew and Gentile. When the Jew and Gentile come to the cross of sinners, they're made into a new creation, a new man, the body of Christ, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Old Testament temple, which succeeded the Mosaic tabernacle, was marked by partitions. There were three entrances into the three departments, outer court, holy place, holy of holies. Then there were sections partitioned off for priests, for Israel, for women and Gentiles. Now, Christ, by his death, he took out the veil, and he became the way, the truth, and the life, so that you go through Christ and come directly to God. And those who come to him are removed from their little department and are placed in Christ, the new temple, where there are no departments. The cross dissolves the fences and the gospel is preached to the Gentiles and to Jews. What a picture we have here. Now, verse 18, For through him, that is Christ, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. I wonder if you've noted that this little verse here is a big verse. It's like a little atom. It has in it the Trinity. Notice that. For through him, that is Christ, We both have access in one Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, to the Father, and that's God the Father. You see, Jew and Gentile at the cross are not only on the same footing as sinners, but through Christ they both have equal access to God, which is a glorious privilege for any human being. And that's one of the things Paul says in the fifth of Romans, that are the benefits of justification by faith. We have access to God through Jesus Christ, and that's wonderful. Now, I don't think you can rush in a brazen way into the presence of God, but it's a real privilege to have access through the Lord Jesus Christ into the Father. And I don't care who the humblest believer is, he has as much access as the Pope at Rome, as the President of the World Council of Churches, and as Vernon McGee has. You have as much right. And that's the reason that I asked people on the radio when I had cancer, I said, pray for me. And I still have it. And I still say to folk, remember me in prayer. I've had several folks say, why did you ask everybody to pray? Why didn't you just ask some folk? Because I think every believer has access to God, my friend. I believe in the priesthood of believers, that we all have access to him. This is the marvelous thing about this new building that we're talking about. 